In the Middle Ages, headwares were ubiquitous. Probably the most iconic ones were medieval hoods. How did they work and how did they evolve? Let's check it out. Medieval hoods came in many different patterns, sometimes with a lyric pipe or other details. But how did all of that begin? A hood is a very old invention. People in ancient times wore hoods as a part of their outer garments. But the idea of detaching it and wearing it independently, that's something that starts with the medieval period. By the end of the 12th century, the hood became the most common form of headwear across the Europe due to its effectiveness, I suppose. The most common combination of fabrics, I believe, were wool from the outside for better protection from weather conditions and temperature, and linen from inside because it's much more comfortable when in contact with the skin. People of all social backgrounds wore hoods, from peasants, through merchants, to the nobility. At first, hoods were quite simple in their design. This is a Viking Age hood, which is basically a rectangular piece of material with two triangles attached to it. Well, these triangles are actually squares when you look at them from the front. And the hood has a hole for the face here, of course. And this is how it looks like when worn. Another style of medieval hood is this one here with a rounded cape. Now, there were hundreds of various cape shapes. Some were looser, some were more tight-fitting. There was even a rectangular one, for example, with the strings going under the arm. The same was for colors, and the, as well as the actual cut of the whole hood. The possibilities were endless. Towards the end of the medieval period, more and more popular became fancy decorations and what is called a lyric pipe was attached to the hoods. People wore multicolored hoods as well. Now what is really interesting is that there were lots of different ways of wearing a hood. This is of course the most common one, but there are quite a few alternatives. Of course you could pull it up or sometimes you could wear the cape under your outer garment. Maybe you wanted to look a little bit stylish and enjoying wearing your hat, but it was very cold and windy and the hat does not protect you that good. So you could actually combine it with a hood as well. This is what we sometimes see on the actual manuscripts. Still, the manner of wearing the hood that is most surprising and also the most crucial to the evolution of this headwear is the so-called chaperon style. This led to a transformation of the hood to a completely new and different type of headwear. You roll this part of the hood and then you put it on top of your head and voila, that's it. Later people started to sew it differently according to the fashion so that you were no longer able to unroll it. <laughs> <laughs> 